Hi guys, today we're gonna go ahead and install the Nevermore filter on your Voron 2.4 or any other printer. Before we begin, you're obviously gonna need the printed parts. You might be able to find them, but I printed these out. Make sure to print out ABS. Now, what's the Nevermore filter? Uh, it's basically, you fill this little tank uh, with a bunch of charcoal, and this is a cartridge. And you have a magnet, and then it just slips on. And then you got two 5015 fans that goes in here, um, driven by 24 volts, or how many volts, you can go ahead and get the voltage you want. But for Voron, I'm gonna run in 24 volts. You also need, I think, uh, three by six, six by three uh, magnets. So, so it snaps on, and then you can change the cartridge easily. Just pull it out, put it back in. And this will sit under your Voron 2.4 bed. If you have any other printer, um, you can go ahead and find a way. So this is the Nevermore filter. What does it do? Um, for example, if you're printing ABS, even with the enclosure, even if you're fully enclosed, there's gonna be some kind of dissipation that's gonna seep through your printer. And you're gonna smell that. Like for example, open printer, when I print ABS with my Prusa, in, you know, in a, even in a big room like this, it's going to smell like ABS and that stuff's not good for you. You can get cancer. So what this stuff does is gets rid of the VOCs. If, if you run this, you'll run it like, if it filters your printout like 10 times, it's it's pretty much gets rid of VOCs up to like 99% or something like that. So this is good to have, especially if you're gonna print ABS. Now, if you're not gonna print ABS, I wouldn't bother, but most of you building Voron 2.4 probably want to print ABS. ABS is great material. So printed this out in ABS. Um, you're gonna need this part, these four parts, right? And you can grab these cheap uh, 5015 fans, 24 volts, wins in on Amazon. I'll have links. And also you need some M3 threaded inserts. I just have this round from my kit. You'll need some uh, heat shrinks. You'll need a solder. You need to solder some wires. You need some wires. I got the AWG 20 uh, wires here. Um, but I think you can use AWG 24. Maybe. You know, this is plenty for 20. So I've got silicone wires that's gonna go under the bed. So let's do it. The first thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and make this magnetic. So grab your magnets and you're gonna see which way they stick. So this, this sticks this way. So I'm gonna grab this last piece here. I'm gonna put it in one of these spots. Get them just right in the right, see how it is? Get them just really just equal, not, not an angle and then go ahead and push it in. Okay, find out where it sticks. And you're gonna stick this other one in that orientation, take it out. You go grab this other piece. And just for test, just just put it in there. There we go. And just stick it in there. Now make sure you print this in ABS. I printed it actually in APAT G the first time. Uh, and then it melted away the top of it and then I had to reprint it. So there, one magnet, boom. You see, if you put it the wrong way, it won't actually stick. You get the opposite. So make sure you do the right right way. So I'm gonna just take this whole thing and just stick it in there. This is actually a good idea. I just thought of this. Oh, that's nice. Because you're holding it and then it's, it's just, you can put it in straight. That's neat. I just figured out something really cool. <laughs> I'm so happy. Cause I was like, oh like, having some trouble sometimes putting these in. Now, since these click this way, I need to find the one that's opposite. The other side is opposite, right? So if I put this guy over here, just stick it straight. Oh, that is nice. And stick it in there. And boom shakalaka. You're gonna just stick this, in, oh, stick this in there like that. And it sticks. Now you need the other side, the other side that's um, not the right side. And then stick that thing right in there. Oof. Oof, stick it in there. I'm pushing it in a little bit with, test it again, and boom shakalaka. Oh, they're so strong they fell out. Um, you might want to use some super glue. I'm just gonna apply some super glue to the end over here. Let me get the side a little bit. Okay. Just stick it, stick it back in the hole. Okay, and then just, ah. 
this dirty bastard. There we go. Push it in a little bit. And let's grab this other guy, the last guy here. Stick it, because now it's sticking. It's straight. It's so easy to apply. Go ahead and push it in, once it's in there. Okay, that's a good fit. That's a really good fit. Now you're gonna have to get the opposite side for this other dude. So opposite side here. Look at that. That's an easy way to do it. See, when I make videos, I think of some cool stuff. So once you have four magnets, they should stick on there. Boom. And the super glue dried up. Pretty, pretty good. So that's it. Leave it alone. You're done with the magnets. Now, as far as charcoal, uh, you need, according to Voron team, you need charcoal that it's not acidified. This is non-acid. Uh, acid. You can get it. Enviro Supply. Just remember Enviro Supply on Amazon. Voron team also recommends this other supplier. You can use that. But I've had zero problems on here. I ordered this after reading Amazon reviews. It's running on my other printer. Uh, running at full speed, you don't smell any ABS, it's pretty cool. And you can use this for other stuff too, anything that needs VOC. And that's all, all you need with the magnets, done. Let's go ahead and install these uh, Winsen 5015s. Now I am installing this on my new printer, and you might as well install it when you're making, building the printer, I realize now, so that's why I'm doing it. But you can always install it after, um, it's just a little hassle because you have to take the bed out and then... Another thing I probably would do is install the stealth burner. I do see it's, it's an old design and there are flaws with it. Uh, when printing non-ABS stuff, it's great for ABS. Now we're gonna need to lengthen the wires anyways. So I would just recommend just... You can go ahead and insert thermal inserts and screw down if you want to. But I feel like I didn't really need to do that. Um, so I'm just gonna skip that step because the wires are already sticking in there. So we'll need to uh, open up um, this a little bit for a little better flow. We're gonna just go ahead and cut along here. It doesn't have to be exact. All right, about that much we'll do. Do it for the other guy too. So that should be plenty, all right, just for better airflow. I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but... All right, next get one of the fans. And you're gonna orient it this way. Um, just grab the grab this wire here, and you're gonna drag it through here. Try to keep the wire straight. Okay, when you get to the end over here, right there, you're gonna go ahead and grab that pace with your pliers. Pull it up. And push the rest of the wires through. Okay, get it to a point where you can insert the fan. Oops. Boom. All right, leave the wires out for now. Uh, and then you're gonna go ahead and grab the other fan and you're gonna do the same thing um, Make sure it's sitting flat like I said you can go ahead and insert the threaded inserts And seat it down, but once you have the case over and put it in there. It's gonna be fine Plus this is not a moving part, so it's not gonna rattle around. So that's why I'm, I'm just gonna skip that step too lazy Yeah, yeah. Too lazy. Not lazy. I'm not lazy. All right, let's do some soldering. I'm just gonna reuse these, and then I'm gonna grab some red and white, uh, red and black, so I don't get the wires mixed up. You can go ahead and use the same color. Just make sure positive goes to positive. Um, just go measure how much wire you're gonna need on the printer. Okay, I'm gonna give it a good two feet. That should be plenty. Two black wires, about two feet. And then two feet of wire with uh, the red. Let's do the heat inserts while we're at it. I have my solder is on. Um, you're gonna need one in the center here. Just get that in there. Really quick. 
All right, you can have one for the Nevermore filter. You don't really have to, it just slides in. Okay, so next for the wiring, I'm gonna cut this one one. one um, you just need like maybe two inches of wire. Maybe even less than that. So very important, you're gonna route the wire through this hole, all right? So let me start with that. One red. And one, we'll, we'll just do one by one. So I'm gonna do one of the fans. Okay, split the wires. Okay. This is too long, sorry. I'm gonna cut it about two inches so it doesn't stick out. Two inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up. I'll do this one at a time. All right. Now you're gonna strip them, strip them, strip them. Okay, strip your wires, uh, just a tiny bit. Yeah, maybe like half an inch. No, that's too much. Half an inch, no, quarter inch. Quarter inch, quarter inch will do. Strip the wires. Grab some shrink wraps. Uh, stick it through before you put it in. Okay, make sure you have shrink wraps before you solder. Otherwise, you have to desolder. Or you, can, you can bring it from the other side too. Okay, I just wrapped the small wire around the bigger wire there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. I'm gonna hold it from the top like that and just put the solder on the top of the two wires. Now that's a very tight connection. Let's do the other side. And I'm gonna just do it from the bottom. You can go slightly like angle. If it doesn't melt right away. There we go. And you got a nice connection there. All right, repeat for this other dude. Oh, heat shrink. Don't forget the heat shrink. Okay, let's heat shrink it. Put both over. The heat shrink over. And boom shakalaka. Um, do it for this other dude. If you don't have a solder for some reason, uh, a good trick you can do, which I did on my Ender 6, because I, I just didn't want to bother, I got too lazy. If you don't have access to solder for some reason and you need to do this now, just, um, just wire them together and electrical tape it and then use a, a cable tie and just zip tie it. That works too, actually. It works fine. That's how I did it for all, all my parents' electrical um, sprinkler installation many years ago. And they, they held up for many, many years, for like almost 20 years. So this part here, just grab this other guy and then just sort of Wrap it over the other guys. Our dirt. Our dirt. So you just sort of hold their place. And you're just gonna go apply some solder. Go from the bottom, apply some shota on the angle, sort of. And you can see the solder is in all places. That should be fine. You know, I forgot to put the, for this. The good thing is I can route it from the other side, but it just takes longer. So let me, let me route this guy from the end of the wire here. But there are times you gotta remember on the next, the other connection we're gonna do, you're gonna have to remember. Otherwise you're gonna have to desolder and that's, I do that all the time, bros. Bros and hoes. Hose before bros. Okay, make sure to put this on there. Somebody's all screaming, Max, you forgot heat shrink. What are you doing? I know my tutorial's not perfect. I'm here to just help the regular man 
Not not all you guys who know how to build a damn 3D printer. Yeah, went to Harvard and super genius already. Um, my channel is really dedicated to to those who don't know anything about electronics. You know, maybe you're a student. Maybe you're you're like a 12 year old, 12 year old kid. I'm building, trying to build 3D printers. Okay, I think uh, I'm gonna cross it like this, and then I'm gonna just wrap around, wrap around, wrap around. Soldering in the air. They they have the soldering support stuff with the alligator clips, but this is such a simple job. You don't need to just solder in the air. Yeah. So when you do this, always keep the solder on the bottom. Uh, that way the solder melts and then also gets to the bottom and it will just cover the whole wire. Uh, let's go ahead and put the heat shrink over. Um, so I know some of you are going to be like, why are you pointing hit the heat gun at the ABS? Well, this, the heat gun like that, it's not enough temperature to melt ABS. That's why we use ABS. All right, you're going to go ahead and pull the wires through as much as you can, sort of. And then you're gonna just push all these wires in here. Okay, slid in perfect. Okay, that's in there nicely. We're gonna grab the other end and we're gonna also solder these to the ends. Now, because we use red and black wires, this is going to make our job so much simpler. Um, and you won't have to crimp. I hate crimping. <laughs> I don't know, just getting old. It's... I'm old 43 now. It's hard to deal with like little things. I don't... I'm not really fond of dealing with little... Little tiny wires. Ah! My hands get very... Um, my hands are always shaky now. Because I drink every day. And some of you going to be like, Max, stop drinking! Be like, Jesus, get a life. Get a life. Stop. Okay, before you do anything, uh, put some heat shrink over. Uh, da, 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 da. Get one in here. And I'm almost done prototyping uh, the world's first commercial 3D printed tires. TPU tires, rims and tires for electric skateboards. Why am I building these 3D printers? So I can go ahead and do that. Um, so really excited. I'll have a video soon on it. Uh, I've been skateboarding like every day, testing out my wheels. 3D printing, building 3D printers. So I'm gonna make these products, I'm gonna need a 3D printer. What kind of 3D printer do I need? I'm gonna need a fast 3D printer. How do I find about Voron? Because I needed a fast 3D printer. What am I not using bamboo? Well, I want it to cost efficient uh, 3D printer. I didn't want to have to overspend on closed proprietary stuffs. And also something I can go ahead and fix easily. But yeah, when I got into Voron, when I heard about Vorons, when I started seeing them, I mean, I got so excited. I'm just really a tech guy and I really love, you know, any kind of open source stuff. Oh, I keep messing that up. It's just so much more fun. Um, I've always fond of Linux, Android, all kind of anything, anything tech. Okay, let me go ahead and solder this guy. Um, if it's just like sitting down, you can grab one of these binder clips to sort of help it stay up. Ah, do it like dirt. Okay, that should be good enough. Kind of loaded. Make sure black goes on black. And I'm gonna go in. Just a little bit of solder will do. You don't have to overdo it. Okay. Just gonna just hold that piece. Okay. Ooh. Oh. God. You know what I forgot? I forgot to check which which black is which black goes which red? Ouch. Okay, I'm gonna have to open this up real quick. And just make sure I'm getting the right positive and the right negative. Apes! Apes! 
I just need to figure out for one of them because I already have one soldered. They so don't make that mistake. Okay, I just need to find the red for this and I'm good. I don't need to find for all of them because I'm lazy. <laughs> okay, so, I'm gonna go like this, up and down. Which one is it? Okay. See, I can feel this one. So it's gonna be this guy. And then finding red for this guy. It's gonna be this guy, red guy. Find the red guy! Feel it, feel it. It's this one, yes. Yes, Mark. Gracias. My friend tells me um, in Mexico they say gracias, like gracias. Adas. Is that true? Como estas? Como estas? Me amo Maxley. Yeah, I love Spanish. I love tacos. I love burritos. I love Spanish. I know Spanish is a fun language. I just feel like because I grew up uh, speaking English most of my life. Early life, I grew up in Korea and I spoke Korean. English is my second language. But I lived 30 years in America. I immigrated when I was really, 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 really young. Okay, get it barely up there. Who took my solder? Where's my solder, man? Where's my solder? Oh, I'll put it up here. Yeah, don't you just love talking to your sheriff? Okay, I think a good way to do it is uh, actually just put a tiny bit of solder, like literally a tiny bit, and then try apply it from the top. I feel like it works a lot better. There we go. You see that? Just a dab will do as long as you have it crossed like that. And that holds it super tight. You'll have no worries. Okay, done with one connector. Let me go ahead and apply some height. That's a tighty job. Good job, Max. One of the fun is ready to go, ready to go. Some people hate my British. British, British English. You can close this back up because, uh, as long as you get, oh my god, I'm gonna stick it. You're never gonna have to open this back up again. So that's why I was like, why do I need the extra, do I need to over engineer this? Uh, you need it. There's a screw holding everything in place. There's nothing rattling, nothing to rattle. There's no clearance for, for rattles. Look, there's no rattle. You, you don't need these screws. I'm telling you, it's, the fans are designed to fit. They were designed too good. They were designed too good. Okay, finish the last two here and we should be good to go. Put it on your printer and bang, bang, boom, boom, bang. Okay, let's crisscross the last wire here. We're almost done, guys. Soldering has become more fun and fun lately. I started soldering when I was nine years old. No, no, seven. I didn't know, really know how to do it because I didn't learn it, but I just started soldering. My solders were so crappy. They're not any better. <laughs> they're not any better. We were not, they're not any better. Just the way. Okay, left setter. Put them in there. Oop. There we go. Oh, that's good. So put some solder on the solder and then go from the bottom and it it adheres a lot better. That's very solid. Okay, no more soldering. That's all the soldering you're gonna need. Ned. Good job, Ned. Your name your new name is Ned. Ned Solder. Ned Solder. My new name is Ned Solder Max Lee. No, Ned. I'll make that. Ned, Ned Sauter? Who the hell is Ned? Okay! Ooh. 
Boom shakalaka. We are done with all the wiring crap. So you got two wires coming out here. And the fan part is ready to go with the wires you can see. Um, you'll obviously need to put some activated charcoal. Let's see that, the fun part. Now the air blows through here and then it channels, there's a channel that blows it upwards. All right, you see that logo. And then we're gonna use, there's, there's a holes on the side. You can use uh, T-nuts to slide it in without taking the whole bed apart, all right? We show you how to do that scene here. Whee. Now the activate charcoal is gonna make your hands real black, so try to use one hand, but they can't, they're not, they're, they're very different. And I remember I was running my printer without a filter, uh, fully enclosed, and then after I installed it, it made a complete difference. Now the only thing I recommend is uh, I don't run the fan at full speed because it gets very loud and you don't have to. I run it maybe like 0 0.7, 0 0.5 is good enough, 50%. Okay, fill up nice. You have to overdo it. You need some room for the air to flow, right? So done with that. Okay, I clean my hands. <laughs> Charcoal is actually very good for Let's go ahead and slide this puppy. And you can print more of these so you can swap. I, I don't know, I forget the exact runtime, but I think they last quite a while. Maybe replace it. If you print 24 7, maybe replace it once a month or something. Maybe. I have a lot of charcoal. Look at that. Shake him up. Shake that. Shake that booty. Shake that booty. What's wrong with this channel? What is wrong with this channel? Just try to blow air into it. Oh yeah. Boom shakalaka, ready to go. Make sure the magnets are not falling, but keep checking it. Check, check, check. If they are falling, apply some super glue. That's ready to go. We're gonna use uh, two T-nuts. If you use um, hammer nuts, the problem is well, you, can, you might be able to get away using hammer nuts, too. Okay, if you don't want to take the bed out, which I don't want to do. Too lazy for that. Not lazy. <laughs> Saves time. Uh, grab something. That's going to go through. I'm just going to grab a piece of filament here. I just need to make it to the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some masking tape. And I just need to make it to the other side. It's Mission Impossible. Okay, I'm just gonna slide it along the frame. Right? Yes. Yes, slide it along the frame. I slide it in the frame, yes. Coming out, yes! No! Yes, I see it. I'm gonna grab this other piece, guide the wire through. All right, so I have the wires coming out. Okay, and then there's a hole here, so we're just gonna stick it through there when we're done with it. Um, grab two T-nuts, and you're gonna stick it in there very carefully. Maybe you have the whole side coming out this way, so it's easier for you to. Just, I'm just gonna stick this in there at an angle. And go ahead and use a one wrench. Just straighten out so it slides real good. There we go. Sliding real good. I got one in there. Grab the other T nuts. Now you don't have to tighten this all the way. Okay, sliding real nice. Pull it up to the ends here. And we're gonna go ahead and pull the wires out. Now this should fit slide because this has been designed with 
uh, this in mind. If it doesn't fit, that means you built your printer wrong. So um, you may have to undo everything and then install it. But it should slide back and forth freely like that. Grab uh, two M3x12s and we're gonna stick it. Just screw it in a, a little bit until you see the edge. Just a little bit of the edge. <laughs> This guy's a little loose, so I'm gonna go ahead and carefully align it to where the T-nuts are. Screw in. Get it tight and then loosen it just a tad until you can slide it. Look at that. So it's a little tight, but it's not gonna move around. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and stick this in here. I'm just going to push it to the length I want. I'm pulling the wires in the back so it's wires are not like all over the place. I'm just going to push it. Right. Yeah, that should be fine. Later on, you want to take it out, just pull it out and push it in and boom shot voila. Uh, never more ready to go. The wires are out. Um, you can cable tie this. It doesn't go all over the place later. That's a good meter. And go ahead and undo the filament. Go ahead and undo this. Filament, filament snake. The snake method. I call it the Voron snake method. I just thought of this today. If you get lazy and you don't want to take your bed apart, especially if you build all your printer and then you only leveled it, if you do that, then you're gonna have to re-level everything. You can do it if you have an existing printer, do it without touching the bed, re-leveling the bed. Okay, you're gonna stick a connector to the bottom here, and it's all gonna go to the printer. But for right now, because I'm not using it, I don't want it to go all over the place. Oh no, I can just stick here. Look at that. That's it. And uh, for the second part, you just have to connect it to any of the fan connectors on your Octopus V1.1 if you're using that or any other. But you can tell that these are the Nevermore fans by these, uh, um, or you could put labels on it, but I'm not going to. Obviously, it's going to be mine. So stick them on there. There's an additional code. I'll put that on my site. You just need to figure out, um, you're probably gonna, I'll put the diagram there where you can put it. Hi guys, let me show you real quick. So I added a heater underscore fan and I um, made a new filter underscore fan. And I set the pin to PD14 and PD15. I think that's fan four and fan five. I'll refer to the diagram. I'll have it on my site. Um, and basically find out where you plugged it in and find the pin, plug it in. And I actually have it uh, filter running at 0.7. You can run at one at full speed, but it gets kind of loud. So I just set it to 0.7, which was plenty enough, but you can go ahead and play with that. Uh, this will kick in when your heater bed uh, turns on. There's other ways to do it, uh, but the just simple addition uh, code and a save and restart. I'll save config and you should have a working uh, Nevermore filter. But for right now, um, I need to still do the electronics on this. So if I finish this, when I do that, I'll have an update. Um, you're pretty much ready to go plug in uh, like one line of code, a few lines of code, add it to your printer CFG and you'll have a working Nevermore filter. That's pretty much it guys. Uh, have a great day. This is the back of the printer by the way. Uh, and I'll see you guys on the next one.